What's the best way to build muscle? Free weights or machines? Well, it depends. Ultimately, this comes down to your goals, training experience, and past injuries. For example, if you're over 40 and you've been training for a while, you may find that doing heavy sets of deadlifts or back squats simply isn't worth the risk, and there are better options that suit your goals without stressing your joints. In today's video, we'll be going over the pros and cons of both free weights and machines, and looking at the current evidence to determine which one is best for muscle growth. We'll also give you some practical recommendations to apply to your own training, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video. With that said, let's jump right in. We'll start with free weights. Free weight movements include anything you can do in the gym with a barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell, etc. Some examples of free weight exercises include squats, deadlifts, overhead press, bicep curls, skull crushers, lunges, you get the idea. One of the biggest advantages of using free weight movements in your workouts is they usually engage more muscles at once, which could lead to more growth. There are two main reasons for this. One is because compound lifts are multi-joint exercises and thus activate more musculature. And two, free weight movements have a degree of instability, which recruits more stabilizer muscles to assist during the exercise. For example, let's compare the squat and the leg press. The squat is a heavy compound lift that mainly targets your quads, glutes, and hamstrings. However, your lower back, mid back, and abs will also act as stabilizers to help keep your torso upright. The leg press, however, does not require stabilization, and although it engages less total musculature, it may help you isolate the quads better. This is great if you've been struggling with lower back pain and still want to push your leg workouts without putting your back under too much stress. Another important aspect to consider with free weights is specificity. Free weights are better for overall strength development and have more carryover into sports. For example, a 2016 study published in the Journal of Human Kinetics compared two groups, a squat group and a leg press group. After eight weeks, the squat group increased their vertical leap while the leg press group did not. This makes sense given that the squat mimics the same movement pattern of a jump. Therefore, if you're lifting to enhance your performance in a sport, you should be including movements that are specific to that sport. On top of that, free weights are more functional and probably a better option if you're looking for overall muscle development or simply want to get stronger for day-to-day -day activities. Additionally, training with free weights allows you to move the weight in a pattern that feels natural, whereas machines follow a more fixed movement pattern. Lastly, free weights are a very time-efficient way of training, and they're quite versatile. With minimal equipment, you can train your entire body. This is especially important if you don't have a lot of time to spend in the gym and still want to make good progress. But free weights aren't all good. There are some cons as well. First con that comes to mind is free weight exercises involve more technique compared to machines. Anyone can safely perform a machine chest press and get a good stimulus, but the same can't be said for the bench press. If injuries limit your range of motion or you simply can't perform an exercise due to pain or discomfort, it's best to start with what you can rather than forcing an exercise just for the sake of it. For example, if you can't perform back squats due to tight hips, knee pain, or lower back issues, you can still train the squat pattern with a hack squat machine and strengthen the leg musculature with isolation exercises like leg extensions and leg curls, which should help reduce hip tightness and improve knee stability. On a different note, and probably the biggest con of using free weights, although they're quite effective and time efficient, they also generate a lot of fatigue and can be more mentally taxing, especially as you become more advanced and start lifting heavier weights. This shouldn't concern you if you're a beginner as you will most likely be focused on learning proper technique and your recovery won't be a limiting factor. However, as an intermediate or advanced lifter, you have to be smarter with your program as your recovery capacities are finite. These recovery resources are important not only for recovering between sessions, but also for the process of building muscle tissue. A beginner might do a full body routine three times per week, focusing mostly on compound lifts and have no issues with recovery, but the same probably doesn't apply for someone more advanced training five to six times per week. If this is you, you need to pay attention to fatigue. If you're doing a lot of heavy compound lifts, you might notice that your joints are achier or you're not recovering as efficiently, which could limit your progress. A sign you're not recovering well could be excessive soreness or inability to progress in the gym. If your performance is decreasing on a weekly basis, meaning you're not able to lift as much weight or complete as many reps, then you should definitely pay closer attention to your recovery. Now that we've discussed the pros and cons of training with free weights, let's jump into everything you should know about training with machines. Although machines get a bad rep for forcing a fixed movement pattern, this can actually be one of their biggest advantages. By having a fixed movement pattern, machines have a lower learning curve, 
making them an accessible and safe choice for anyone, whether you're a beginner or a more experienced lifter. Furthermore, the stability provided by machines can be great for isolating specific movements or training around an injury. If you hurt your shoulder and still want to train your legs, you probably want to avoid doing barbell squats or deadlifts as they directly involve the shoulders. In this case, you could do a leg press, leg curl, or leg extension and still train your legs effectively. On top of that, machines can provide unique ways of training your muscles. Let's take a cable machine for example. This will allow you to perform pulling movements from different angles to bias different areas of the back. Not only that, but cables are a great way to keep constant tension on the muscles during certain exercises. And another thing to consider is that machines are less fatiguing than free weights. This is even more relevant if you've been training for years and are more interested in maintaining your current physique, rather than pushing hard to build more muscle. According to the scientific evidence, it's much easier to maintain a physique than it is to build one from scratch. In this 2011 study, subjects were able to maintain their muscle mass for eight months despite dropping their volume down to one ninth of what they were doing previously. This is definitely something to consider when you want to maintain your hard-earned muscle but have to focus on other priorities such as work, a wife, or family in general. Lastly, machines can help you push your sets closer to failure, especially if you train alone. For example, it's probably not a good idea to push a set of bench press to failure without a spotter, but you could safely do so using a machine chest press. Now, while machines do provide a lot of pros, there are also some cons to consider. Some of the biggest cons of training with machines is their design may not agree with everyone. You see, machines are built for the average person. If you don't fit a machine's design, you might feel uncomfortable because it doesn't fit your individual biomechanics. This is why it's important to choose machines that feel good and allow you to focus on the target muscle without it feeling awkward or uncomfortable. Another con is that machines are not as functional or strength friendly as free weights. This comes down to the principle of specificity. Doing heavy leg presses can certainly grow your legs, but it probably won't do much to improve your athleticism. At the end of the day, it all comes down to your individual goals. So now that you know the pros and cons of both free weights and machines, it's time to answer the question of this video. Which one is better for muscle growth? As with a lot of things in fitness, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Both free weights and machines can build muscle effectively. If your goal is to build as much muscle as possible, then your focus should be on generating the most amount of mechanical tension in a target muscle. One 2020 study by Schwanbeck et al. randomly assigned participants into two groups, a free weight group and a machine group. At the end of the study, both groups experienced similar increases in muscle growth. Another study published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health randomly assigned participants to one of three groups, a machine-only group, a free weights-only group, or a group where they mixed machines and free weights. Not only did all groups experience similar increases in muscle mass, but the three groups also experienced similar increases in strength. In short, the current body of evidence suggests that we should be focusing on movement patterns to compare different exercises, not whether they're a machine or free weight exercise. At the end of the day, your muscles don't know whether you're training with free weights or a machine. They respond to mechanical tension. With that in mind, let's go over some practical recommendations you can apply to your own training. If you're a beginner in your first one to two years of lifting, focus on free weight compound lifts such as the bench press, deadlifts, and squats, as these will give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of overall muscle development. However, if you have any nagging injuries or find some free weights lifts uncomfortable, find an alternative. If doing the bench press with a barbell hurts your shoulder, then use dumbbells. If dumbbells also hurt your shoulder, try a machine variation instead. A good way to build the core of your program is to include the six main movement patterns, a squat, a hip hinge, like a deadlift or a deadlift variation, a vertical pull, like pull-ups or a lat pull-down, a vertical push, like a shoulder press, a horizontal pull, like a barbell row, and a horizontal push, like the bench press. Doing so will ensure you're training your entire body. If you want to maximize hypertrophy, you may also include machines to target specific muscles. Research shows leg extensions lead to better activation of the rectus femoris, one of your quadricep muscles, compared to a squat. The same research also shows that leg curls lead to better activation of the bicep femoris, one of your hamstring muscles, compared to Romanian deadlifts. Another thing to keep in mind when deciding whether to include more machines or free weights in your workouts is your goals. If your goal is to maximize muscle growth, both options work great. But if you're looking to improve your strength or performance for a specific sport, make sure to include movements that are specific to that sport. Another thing to consider, especially as you become more advanced, is fatigue management. If your main goal is hypertrophy, this may mean moving away from traditional compound lifts like the deadlift and squats and prioritizing more machine movements or different free weight variations. 
For example, Romanian deadlifts are a better option to grow your hamstrings compared to conventional deadlifts, and they lead to less overall fatigue. Furthermore, hack squats or leg presses can be an effective way of targeting your quads without the excessive fatigue of having a heavy barbell on your back. Not only that, but if you had to choose between doing heavy squats or leg presses after a few sets of heavy deadlifts, you might be better off doing leg presses to minimize physical and mental fatigue. If you're looking to maximize hypertrophy and strength, you can also prioritize different compound lifts on different days. For example, on the first leg day of the week, you can start your workout with heavy squats for your quads, and then add in some leg curls later in the workout. On the second leg day of the week, you could start with heavy deadlifts and then move on to a machine that targets the quads. Lastly, machines can be a great option to train around an injury as they don't require stability and allow you to isolate a specific muscle. Even if you're not injured, you might decide that heavy compound lifts are not worth the risk, especially as you get older and you want to protect your joints. In this case, it's perfectly fine to have the core of your program revolve around machines. Remember, there's a time and a place for both free weights and machines. At the end of the day, how much you include of each depends on equipment availability, your specific goals, physical limitations, and what you enjoy the most. If you love minimalist training with barbells and dumbbells, you're probably not missing out if you don't add machine work. And if you prefer doing machines because they give you a great stimulus or they're safer, that's also an effective strategy for maximizing muscle growth. It doesn't have to be one or the other. A good hypertrophy program will consist of a healthy balance of both free weight exercises and machines. As a general guideline, you want to prioritize exercises that feel good on the joints, provide a good mind-muscle connection, and allow you to progress over time. There is no must-do exercise for hypertrophy. So if something doesn't feel right, find an alternative. Staying injury-free should be one of your top priorities, as this will lead to better long-term results and help you stay strong and healthy for many years to come. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking for a jump start for new muscle growth, grab a copy of my brand new program, Mass 5 Full Body. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now you can get an additional 25% off by using the coupon code MASS25. If you want to learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.